Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to the final conference of the Food Factory for Us competition on upscaling or downscaling a food supply chain to a national or regional level. And today we'll have a short introduction to the competition and then we'll have the presentations of the teams of their final project and then we'll have the announcement of the winning team. So welcome everyone. You see, the sponsors of this competition include the Fair Chain Project, funded by the European Commission, and Iseki Food Association. I'm going to start by telling you just a little bit about the Food Factory for Us. The Food Factory for Us is a completely online competition, and it's open to students in a food-related program Masters, we also accept other levels now, uh, anywhere in the world. And these students form a team of three to five, and they design a specific solution to a specific problem that is relevant to the food industry. And the student projects are evaluated by a true advisory board that includes academics, professors, but also industry representatives and association representatives. The Food Factory for Us competition has been going on for hmm, since 2017, I believe, and it's been associated with several different European projects. This is the advisory board this year. These are the people who have evaluated the team projects, the written reports, the slides that were sent in, and these are the same people who will evaluate the presentation today. The structure of the Food Factory for Us competition is has changed over the years. It started with very little interaction with the students. There were a few technical lectures online, and the students developed their projects. Over the years, the focus of the competition, well, of the trainings, has become uh, more geared toward core competences and soft skills and teaching the students who participate how to communicate. And they still develop their project mostly on their own, but in our online trainings, they study and work on these five core competences. And you see that we have five online trainings where we cover uh, the, the competences and also include some technical information as suggested by the students. <clears throat> the student projects are assessed in a transparent manner. This information is available to the students before the competition even begins. The quality of the student project is considered specifically that it matches to the competition aim, that it's applicable to industry, and that it can have an impact, social, environmental, or economic. Student participation is also a part of the evaluation. And that's the number of students per team who come to the online trainings and who participate in the group work and who submit the projects and uh, reports that are asked for during the competition. The project report is also evaluated for its quality and clarity. And the presentation slides are evaluated. And then a big part of the evaluation and presentation that we're going to see today. Not only the quality, clarity of the presentation, but the way it's delivered something the students work on during the competition training sessions, and also the students poise in responding to questions that are posed by the audience or by the advisory board. We try and get some fabulous uh, awards for the winning team. And an award that everyone likes is money. And the winning team will get 300 euros that is sponsored by the Iseki Food Association. The winning team also gets their corresponding certificate as winners 
this is something that you'll have on your curriculum for your whole life, probably, for the winning team. And we try to get the winning team to go to a professional conference. In previous years, that's been the Next Food final conference or the Fair Chain organized food hack, which took place in collaboration with RISE in Sweden last year. And this year, we're trying to get the winning team to come to the Fair Chain final conference, which will be in uh, November 24 in Belgium. Not promised yet. We'll see what we can do. But the 300 euros and the winner's certificates are guaranteed. Every team member that participates all teams winning and not also receive a certificate of participation as long as they complete all the parts of this competition. So this is the topic of this year's Food Factory for Us competition, upscale or downscale a food supply chain to a national or regional level. And now I can hand to my colleague, Luminita, and she'll introduce the three teams that we are expecting to present today. And I'll say that we're kind of uh, sorry that several teams dropped out this year and very unusual. In previous competitions, we've had 10 teams um, presenting at the final conference. And this year we have only, only three. And I'm not even sure that all three are, are here today. I didn't see anyone from the Dabagira team. Uh, hopefully they'll connect. But I still wanna say that all of the teams uh, really contributed up until this very final uh, step. So I'm surprised that, that other teams aren't here and the teams that are presenting they did a lot of work to get ready for this final competition. So despite the small number, I think we're going to have an interesting uh, couple uh, hour or two here listening to these teams. Luminita, can you take it from here? Yes, thank you very much. You can hear me, I think so now, and yes. you can also see my slides. Just yeah, so welcome also from my side to all of you to the final to the final conference of the um, uh, competition. Um, and now I just wanted to bring into the light the main actors of the Food Factory for Us competition, the competing teams, so you, the students. Um, the competition was launched in late autumn uh, last year, and we have received a total of nine applications, of which eight projects have been selected. This means 34 students um, in total from all over the world. Unfortunately, as Katrin also mentioned, uh, we had for today um, the participation of uh, three of the teams, Barley Bakes, Tabajira, and Haifik. But looking at the um, uh, people present today, I think we will have only uh, the presentation of the final projects from Barley Bakes from Great Britain and Haifik from Turkey. Thank you all, uh, you all for the contribution. Um, that you have made during this competition. It was not easy. Uh, and good luck today with your presentations. Um, okay, someone is joining, so this is good. Um, just some rules before you start with the presentation. As you know, you will have 10 minutes to give your presentation, and then we will have uh, two, three minutes for questions from the audience. Um, any uh, participant can ask a question either by writing the question in the chat or by um, raising the hand. If you raise the hand, then wait until we give um, you time to speak. So don't turn on your microphone before. And please keep your microphones muted um, during all this um, um, final event, not to disturb the other uh, team's uh, presentation. Um, okay, thank you very much. And with this, um, so we have the two teams, Barley Bakes and Haifik. We have put them here in alphabetical order. But um, yeah, 
um, as you like to participate. Now, another thing I would like you to do, just please open your, um, turn on your uh, cameras so I can do a um, photo. I think Katrin is saying that she has problems with Zoom, so, but it's fine. We can wait five minutes. Just turn on your, um, I will stop sharing. So, okay, so just smile because I will make a, I will take a photo that we will post on the social media. Very nice. And in this time, we also wait for Katrin because she is part of the, um, of the advisory board to evaluate your presentation. So I think we can wait a little bit. I will share my screen again. Okay, okay. and then um, who wants to start? Parley Bakes, is this okay if you start? Wonderful, yes. Welcome everyone, nice to see you. I will just share my screen. Yeah, just wait a bit. Uh, okay, okay. No, I think. Okay, so Araminta, when you are ready, you can start. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Araminta Prod, and together with my colleagues, Sam, Ben, and Jack, we form Barley Bakes from the United Kingdom. We're based at the University of Nottingham, and our project is the curation and development of a barley based brownie product. So barley is a particularly useful grain. It is very rich in vitamins and minerals, and there are lots of advantages to using it in the diet, and particularly involving it with children's food. However, the processing of barley um, poses risks and is difficult to do to incorporate all of these advantages. So our project is looking at how we can maximize barley. So as I said, barley is a very underutilized grain. At the moment, it is often used as a food for animals and it is particularly used as part of crop rotation. So we do grow a lot of barley, um, particularly in temperate climates. However, we don't have the use for it at the moment. So it is used in beer making and as I said, animal feed rather than maximizing its nutritional benefits. However, it does have significant health benefits due to its beta-glucan and vitamin and mineral contact, content, um, specifically involving the cardiovascular health, diabetes and cancer. It reduces the risk of any of these health issues occurring. So some of the vitamins and minerals that barley is rich in are zinc, selenium, calcium, niacin, thiamine and B6. However, the most important one is beta-glucan. So beta-glucan is dietary fibre. Um, it's a soluble fibre found in barley. And this one is particularly important for contributing to lowering the risk of heart diseases. And there are studies which show that it may have an anti-cancer effect as well. So brownies. So this is our focus. And we have focused on processing barley in multiple ways. So barley can be processed into a flour by milling just in a very similar way to wheat or other cereals but it can also be malted so this involves steeping where you soak it in water for a prolonged period of time and then allowing it to germinate where the grain becomes alive again and starts to grow. This does make it slightly sweeter as well which is a particular advantage that we're wanting to use. So the advantage of our brownie by using, malt, by using malt syrup and barley flour is that the only ingredient that comes from outside of the UK is cocoa powder. This particularly increases the food security, which has been found to be very important and a priority. So as I said, the benefits are that barley is very widely available. It's currently underutilized, which is a bit of a problem. It's the price of growing it is not particularly attractive. Farmers aren't sure what to do with it. However, the crop rotation, the full crop rotation to improve the health of the fields involve wheat, turnips, 
barley and clover or rye. So we do need to grow a lot of barley and we need to find a use for it. It does also reduce the food miles and increases the food security. We aren't as reliant on ingredients from outside of the UK. We've seen that with the war in Ukraine, that's had a huge impact on the oil in terms of sunflower oil and also the energy prices. So being increasingly independent and secure with our food is very important. So when we're facing the issue of scale up, barley at the minute is not widely accepted. It's not used as a flour in baked goods, um, particularly because of the low content of gluten. It makes that it can't stick together very well. It's not binding. However, we've come up with a, well, we are using a relatively new process that is currently at the pilot scale, which is malted barley flour. So malted barley flour involves steeping and germination, as I described. Um, but however, you then go on to dry the flour and mill it. This means that it's a slightly sweeter flour. And the incorporation of malt syrup into the brownie involves that stickiness and binding, which overcomes the problems that we face with gluten. So malted barley flour. First of all, you have to steep your grain. So we can use a grain called hulvous barley, which means that we don't have to remove the inedible husk. The inedible husk is where most of the nutrients lie. So by using this grain, we maximize the nutritional benefits. This grain can be used whole, so no processing is required before the steeping. And then as it starts to germinate and grow, that's when we stop and we dry and mill the grain. Now, this process is very similar to wheat. It's widely available and all the technology is available and widely used, which reduces any problems in scaling up. It's just adapting an existing process to use this malted barley flour to enable us to incorporate barley. So our brownies are nutritionally superior and we are particularly marketing them to parents. So these brownies have all the nutritional requirements that children need on a daily basis. So the UK government recommends that children have supplements of vitamins A, C and D. And these brownies are fortified and from the barley have the recommended daily amount. So it has that peace of mind for parents as well that the brownie is nutritionally good. There's It's a brownie, it's not fruit, it's not necessarily what you would imagine giving to your children. However, it does have that nutritional backing that parents will look for when they're giving to, giving their children treats. So our solution is to make barley more widely used. It's brilliant grain. And at the minute, we just don't appreciate it enough. But it's also incorporating it in a way that's going to be a value, value to society. So increasing that nutritional for children, and making sure that they have everything that they need, boosting their health, um, strong bones um, from the calcium and improving their cardiovascular health, making sure that, you know, we're not, strokes and heart attacks aren't things that you associate with children, but it's always beneficial to improve your cardio health. And particularly with the scale up, it increases the food security. So there's lots of economic reasons as to why barley is brilliant to scale up and how this poses a solution. However, it's also very sustainable due to the locality of the grain. And as I said, the crop rotation, it's really important that we focus on something that the UK or any other temperate climate can support in its entirety. And this barley brownie really does maximize that. So thank you from Barley Bakes. And can I ask if there are any questions? Okay, good. Thank you very much, Araminta. If you have any questions, um, please turn on your mic and ask or just write it in the chat. Maybe I can ask something in between until someone decides to talk. Um, I, if I understood correctly, the only ingredients that you have in the uh, in the muffin, it's just in the brownie, 
is just the flour, the syrup and uh, cocoa powder. So the barley replaces the sugar in a traditional brownies. The malt syrup replaces sugar and the barley flour replaces wheat flour. We do also have the cocoa powder, which does come from outside of the UK. But there's also butter and eggs, which are, again, locally grown and can come very close to the factory that produces it. Oh, okay. That sounds like a clean label. Yeah, it's a priority and it's very important in society at the minute. I think there's definitely a push towards clean label and self-supporting as well. My question is about the consumer uh, study. Do you have any information on from taste testing? So we have created some samples and um, the I think like you can see here that the profile of sensory characteristics are very competitive compared to a traditional brownie. The moisture is very slightly higher, but that does again actually improve the sensory profile of the brownie. And the incorporation of the malt syrup actually creates almost a nutty, if you imagine Nutella, it, it creates that. So it's not as um, simple perhaps as a traditional brownie. However, it does complement the chocolate very well. So the, the feedback has been very positive. Uh, this product is sold um, at national level or in certain regions of the country? So at Local the moment, level, you see what I mean? Yeah, so at the moment, the this brownie is a concept. So all of the ingredients work and it has been tested at the pilot scale. Mm -hmm. um, we have planned a way of, a way of scaling up um, in a food factory that could be distributed nationally with the packaging that could go straight onto the shelves. I don't know if you're familiar with the UK, we have Mr. Kipling cakes and they come in individual plastic packages. Um, obviously we'd be looking at a biodegradable alternative, but a similar kind of concept um, to enable the shelf life to be improved. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I have some questions on the sustainability and processing because have you tried to estimate the energy and the impacts of drying? Because comparing with, uh, uh, for example, wheat flour, you could, you need, you have a drying step that requires energy. Yes. Have you tried to calculate that and see what it gets in uh, climate impact? Yes, I have actually. So we've conducted some studies and actually when we look at barley compared to wheat, the traditional a conventional oven isn't actually superior if you adapt an air fryer and which minimizes the free volume, it actually maximizes the drying. So when we looked at it compared to, you always have to dry wheat to a specific moisture level um, around 10%. However, with the barley, you actually want a, because we're using the malt syrup, we want a higher moisture content flour. So we don't need to reduce the moisture to as low as 10%. Actually, we're aiming for around 14%. So that reduces some of the energy requirements and also reducing the free volume of the kiln that you would use to dry actually reduces the energy requirement. So I think when we were looking at we did a conceptual design of around 7,200 tonnes of product and it required um, around 30,000 kilowatt hours of energy in, in a year. And that is in carbon footprints uh, because I think that is the tricky balance. Yeah. Uh, so what, if you compare it with a conventional bread. So, so comparing milling the flowers, the flowers are very comparable. Yeah. Um, so uh, we but often, you dry we, it. You dry it before you mill it. So we dry the grain before we mill yeah, it. That is the same step way. I'm focusing on a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So if you were making a wheat flour, mm. you would have to dry to approximately ten percent moisture yes. content to be able to make a dry flour. With the barley, you only have to dry to approximately fourteen percent. But I think you started, or did I, did I misunderstand? With forty percent of water. Yeah, so yeah. You, so you it's more water you have to take away. 
Yeah, you steep yeah. it to 40%, but natural yeah. drying in the air will reduce some of that Aha. as well. Ah, okay. You yeah, use natural. Mm. Okay. Then I understand. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit my question. And also one thing that you could bring with me, uh, just so that at least uh, if you compare in Sweden, you use a lot of more fertilizers uh, for wheat that uh, so barley also have from the primary production a uh, lower environmental impact. Yeah. So that could feed into the equation. Yes. Yeah, and barley barley is great. And it really yeah. is. It's advantaged in the fields. The farmers really do use it to, you can't grow wheat in the same field forever. You have to rotate your crops. Yeah. And barley is a brilliant one that they use to keep the nutrients within the soil. So it's, it's definitely got its advantage environmentally from the growing side. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much, Araminta. I think, Thank you. Uh, yeah, we can move to the next team. Uh, who will share the screen so that, that I can give you? Uh... Uh, I'm, I will share the screen. Okay. So, and I can, okay, 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 good. Is it okay? Okay. No, okay. Now it's perfect. Now it's perfect. So... Okay, I'm starting right now, Dan. Welcome, everyone. As a HIFI group, today we will be presenting to you our project of overcoming the distribution maze roadmap technologic challenges in Bursa Black Pig distribution. And, yeah. We are focused on implementing new high tech transportation system to mitigate fresh produce loss especially challenges in transporting Bursa black pig. Currently about 35% of fresh pig are lost during transportation, thus limiting their export to other countries. As the gold demand for this premium quality pig rises, we must elevate our transportation method to match them. We propose the employment of fleet automated quidded vehicles equipped with radio sensor to control and manipulate quality control parameters to make sure each pick error is destination in pristine condition. We are committed to empowering local farmers and elevating Turkey's position as a leader in global pick markets. We are excited to share our ambitious vision for transforming the transportation of fresh Bursa black pigs with ultimate goal of transforming Turkey's pick export industry. Every year, a significant 35% of these precious pigs arrive at destination in unacceptable conditions. It is not only the substantial financial losses, but also limits the market potential for Turkey. But here we are coming. Our aim is crystal clear. Minimize the losses during the transportation, boost productivity with the cutting edge technologies, maintain high fruit quality and the end game scaling up turkey's fresh pig export operation unlocking new market opportunities and fostering the economic growth let me introduce you to a leading champion of the fig world bursa black fig they are big juicy and have a dark skin that makes them unique with the amazing taste and high demand because of their antioxidants. Earning geographical education status in 2019 provides their quality. In Europe, they are perfect choice. Turkey is a top fig producer worldwide, but has some trouble transporting fresh fig efficiency. It is <laughs> results in significant 35% loss preventing them from selling more fish abroad, which is why Turkey is not among the top 10 exporters due to transportation issues. Turkey cannot export fresh fig easily, even though it is a top producer facing many obst obstacles. Transporting, transportation challenges lead the most dried or semi-dried export with the fresh figs having a small market share due to significant product losses. Bursa black fig especially get damaged during the most 
during the most transportation. Transportation process itself can be challenging. Temperature changes, humidity, vibration increase affects foliage, especially delicate figs such as Bursa Black. This damage does not only affect the fruit, it disrupts the entire food supply chain. To solve this problem, we need new and smart ideas. In Turkey's uh, fig export, uh, we are addressing challenges in transporting fresh Bursa black figs with a technology-driven approach. IoT technology enables real-time tracking of shipments while automatic guided uh, vehicle supplies track streamlining logistics. Uh, advanced features like vibration monitoring minimize fig damage, reducing waste. Smart takes maintain quality by controlling storage conditions precisely. This take regulation is respecting our industry for efficiency and quality assurance. Uh, IoT integration in transportation mm -hmm. revolution, uh, revolutionizing uh, the way we track and manage uh, fixed shipments. Real-time monitoring facilitated by sensory alerts, continuous monitoring of the vehicles, location and status, advanced uh, reporting capabilities, optimize the logistic process for warehouse and uh, deliveries. Smart takes attached to fix are equipped with light, temperature and humidity sensor, providing precise control over storage conditions. This sensor combined it with a microcontroller and radio frequency identification and a calculated real-time data collection and analysis. This revelation is transforming Turkey's peak export process, breaking barriers and paving the way for new global marketing opportunities. Uh, in our efforts to revolutionize uh, FIG transportations, uh, we are introducing automated guided vehicles to replace traditional methods. Uh, the vehicles operate continuous without interruptions, ensuring a seamless flow of fixed from production to export points. Powered by uh, the ion batteries, these vehicles have a quick two hours characterizing time, uh, reducing turnaround times and minimizing distributions. With zero maintenance requirements, automatic guided vehicles are cost effective, effective and efficient, delivering consistent performance. This technology represents a paradigm shift in fin transportation, uh, guaranteeing timely and cost effective delivery. Turkey's fix industry will benefit greatly from the integration of IoT technology and uh, automated guided vehicles engaging the transportation operations significantly. The innovation Bursa Black Fig transportation has for reaching impacts across social, economic and environmental fronts. Socially, it boosts rural development by supporting farmers and preserving traditional communities. By efficiently transporting figs, farmers secure stable incomes sustaining rural economies and enhancing community, community resilience. Economically, it drives increased profitability for farmers and exporters through reduced waste and higher yields. Streamlined transportation process capitalize on market opportunities, fuel economic growth. In essence, this innovation isn't just about fix. It's about building a better, more sustainable future for Turkey and beyond. <clears throat> Our present future is bright, post to revolutionize peak transportation and expand into broader perishable food logistics. Our innovative transportation system ensures minimal losses and maintains fruit quality through real time monitoring and predictive maintenance with advancement in IoT and ACV capabilities. We remain off the forefront of innovation, meeting industry demand and creating new markets beyond FIC. We see possibilities for expansion into transporting other perishable food, opening up growth opportunities near market. Collaborate development among stakeholders is driving continuous improvement. Ultimately, our aim to shape off the future of food logistics in Turkey 
and beyond through innovation. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much also to you ladies. And now it's the time for questions. Well, maybe I could start a little bit. Um, um, I think this is a, a very interesting solution and could be used for many crops and fruits and save a lot of waste. Uh, but one thing I was thinking is this solution meant to be like the first mile, like the long distance and last mile. Uh, how have you been thinking? Well, we want to focus on upscaling of Turkey pig export because um, after the COVID also, uh, fresh pigs ex exporters are become increased, especially everyone wants to be much more getting healthier in COVID times after the COVID as well. Uh, so fresh fix exports starting to increase. And we have amazing fig, fig that Bursa Black Fig is different. They are big and different form. So we want to make that product upscaling. That is why we want to um, export a, to long distance to that product. And also in Turkey is the one of the, like not leading the most fake production but sadly we don't have uh how can i say we don't have um any system to export fresh fake generally um when when we export the fresh fakes it's getting much more um damage and we we cannot eliminate um food waste fig waste so we want to focus on that point you want okay. to improve that point. yeah uh, I was thinking of the lor lorries, the automatic lorries. Uh, I, I think, or is it at the farmer or at the very first step you are using it, or is it for the big lorries driving along in Europe uh, that you tend to implement this system if it gets real? What does it best fit for? Um, well, we can improve that system, I guess, but probably we can start the buying product from the farmers um, to destination country. We can, yeah, we can take our fake product from the farmers and we can export to countries. Yeah. And the second question, you say you will use a lot of sensors. Uh, if you send them away very far, how is the return of the census organized? Well, um, we a bit read article about that as well, because we want yeah. to have some information to use new technology for us as well. Um, um, humidity, vibration and temperature sensor is important for us because fake is generally waste during the transportation because of the vib vibration. So we need to also take care of the vibration at that point. And humidity imp also imp like important factor and temperature because it's kind of like um, cold chain technology. We need to take care of it, take care of it during the transportation. So these tech sensors can able to use it. Also, there is some um, radio frequency um, indication system also um, covers that technology. Also like, um, so we can improve, import the perishable foods. We combine those sensors also like with um, I or T technology. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you as well. Any other questions? I I also wanted to ask something. Maybe this is related with what um, Karin asked. How much um, of the figs are now transported with the lorries, and how much are they transported by boat, or by by train, or I don't know, uh, by plane? How they are transported now? Because to reach 
um, far countries, then yeah. you you always use the lorries or? I guess um, they are using also like track system as well. Also, they are using um, airplane, like flying technology, airplane technologies. But, you know, we also wanted to be focused on the sustainable tea. Like um, if you use um, transportation with airplanes, it will be or carbon dioxide footprint will be increased as well. Also, the, that technology, AVG technology, is continuous technology and it is new technology. So we don't have to, like, nobody will drive the car, that track. So it won't stop. It will be continuous to other countries easily. So it will be also decreasing the um, carbon dioxide footprint during that time because it's kind of electrical technology. We will use batteries. And um, we don't have, um, I don't have, um, how can I say? Well, um, right now they are using um, track technologies and airplane technologies that we know, but we want to fo focus on the AVG technology, automated, automated technology that help us during that transportation. Okay, good, thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay, then I think we are now finished with the presentations. Thank you very much also to the HIFIG team. Um, and now uh, we will take 15 minutes break. I created a breakout room for the advisory board. So please go into the breakout rooms um, and uh, you, the teams, we will meet again at uh, 20 or 25, Catherine. What do you say? I think 20 is probably good. Okay. So we meet again uh, at 3.20 mm -hmm. and I will start the breakout room. Yeah. I think, Catherine, we forgot to turn on the recording for the um, announcing the winner. That's okay. I think that's okay. okay. Right, we just need the picture. Yeah, I think that's yeah, right. Okay. You're right, I didn't turn it on. I thought of it afterward, but then I thought it was okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so sign up for the newsletters and you will hear about any other Food Factory for Us competitions we might have where you are always invited back. We have never had the same students win twice, but of course you can with a different project. And also all of the students are welcome to share with their fellow students this opportunity to participate in this competition and add to your curriculum. So uh, remember all students complete the learner evaluation and you will get your winning or your participatory certificates. And we thank you very much. Thank you all for your efforts and see you next time. Thank you as well. It thank was so enjoyable time that we spent with you. Thank you for all. Yeah. See you later as well.